Welcome back. The closer the election gets, the harder the bombshells fall. The latest one dropping on former Vice President Joe Biden in the form of an explosive new Senate report detailing his son Hunter's questionable behavior, including concerns of bribery, extortion, even payments to women who, quote, appear to be linked to an Eastern European prostitution or human trafficking ring. Senate Homeland Security Chairman Ron Johnson has spearheaded the GOP investigation, along with Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley, and he joins me now. Senator, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Good morning, Maria. Your committee released this, uh, th this document this week. Walk us through the most stunning parts of what we need to understand about this document, Senator. Well, let's just start with Ukraine. We found that Hunter and his partner, Deb, and their business businesses, uh, uh, raked in about $4.2 million. That's about $140,000 a month, uh, almost $1.7 million per year for being on this board. We also found out that through George Kent that a $7 million bribe was paid to the prosecutor general's office seven months after Hunter and Devin joined the board. And, of course, Archer uh, Hunter was, was uh, put on the board supposedly for corporate governance and transparency. Uh, we also found out that the financial dealings extended way beyond Ukraine. For example, a three and a half million dollar payment made to uh, Hunter Biden's businesses by the former wife of the now deceased former mayor of uh, Moscow. She's a billionaire. Uh, it's widely believed that she got her billions through corrupt practices when her uh, husband was uh, uh, the mayor. And then, of course, all of the uh, business associates, associations that the Hunter Biden, the, the millions in cash flow between China and, and Chinese nationals that had connections to the Communist Party and the uh, People's Liberation Army. Uh, and what, Maria, what is most frustrating is the press has basically just dismissed it, saying, oh, there's nothing new here, nothing illegal. First of all, it's not my job in Congress to prove illegality or to prosecute. We're, we're here to expose information that should be incredibly troubling to the American public, and yet the press just kind of shrugs and moves on. Right. Well, they have obviously chosen a, a side on this. Now, I want to sh run an interview with Joe Biden because he was asked about this on ABC News. And we want to run it for you because I want to get your reaction of how he addressed it. Watch this. What's your understanding of what your son was doing for an extraordinary amount of money? I don't know what he was doing. I know he was on the board. I found out he was on the board after he was on the board. And that was it. And there's nobody... Well, no you've had said, a lot of time. Isn't this something you want to get to the bottom of? No, because I trust my son. Your reaction, Senator. This is, of course, Axios on HBO, uh, an interview which ran December 19th. Well, I hate to say it, but Joe Biden is lying to the American public. When he said in the tail end of 2019 that he never spoke to his son about his overseas business dealings, that was a lie. We, we know in testimony now from Amos Hochstein who is the only people we know that actually spoke directly to the vice president about this uh, glaring conflict of interest. Uh, the vice president then talked to Hunter, who then sent me with Amos Hochstein to talk about this very subject. We know that Hunter took a multi-hour plane trip over to China with his father, had a separate agenda, but during that trip, did arrange for a handshake between one of his business partners, Jonathan Lee, and the vice president. What was all that about? So. I've never believed that Vice President never talked to his son, Hunter. He's still lying to the American public. And the, the mainstream media has to ask far tougher questions. Yeah. We have a graphic here of all of the international transactions that you were able to uncover, Senator. And you mentioned the $3.5 million wire transfer uh, from the wife of the former mayor of Moscow. You mentioned open to bank accounts with Chinese national, uh, $100,000 global spending spree. Uh, with James and Sarah Biden, and then paid non-residential woman who appeared to be linked to an Eastern European prostitution or human trafficking ring. It's, it's pretty extraordinary uh, what you've come up with, but where will the accountability be? I mean, you just mentioned that the press is not making anything of it. I want to go through this interview with William Barnett as well. This also was declassified this week. I've got the declassifications right here in front of me. What struck you from this interview with Mr. Barnett, an FBI agent? You know, primarily what he said that the, the special counsel office was completely upside down. Uh, they already knew they wanted to get Trump. They already knew their theory of the case. And rather than have the evidence really guide the investigation, they, they basically just knew the evidence was there and it was just a matter of how, how, you know, finding it. So they already come to their pre, preconceived conclusion of this thing. 
And, you know, Marie, if, if what you're reporting is correct, it is incredibly disappointing that John Durham is not going to be reporting. There would be not, what's political is if he doesn't report. We, we, we have had the, you know, the deep, and I will call it the deep state, uh, through these other investigations, prevent the American public from knowing what happened with the FBI's corruption of uh, their investigation, the corruption of the transition process for now three and a half years. We, we have been prevented from getting documents because John Durham doesn't want us to in any way, shape, or form affect his prosecution. So the bottom line, that means the American people might go to the polls when not, without knowing the full extent and, and all the detail of all the corruption, again, of that FBI investigation and the corruption of the transition process. I think John Durham, yeah, if, if, he's not gonna, if he's not going to prevent uh, present indictments, Attorney General Barr has to make available to the American public what they've already found out, or at a minimum, prevent, provide those documents to people like me that, have, that these things are under subpoena. You know, John Radcliffe has to declassify this information so that we can make it public to the American public before the election. The political nature is if we don't provide that information. Well, there will be more declassifications, as far as I'm hearing, that there will be more declassifications potentially this week that could be very important and telling for the American people. But I agree with you. I've spent a lot of time, three plus years, on this investigation and tried to seek out truth. I agree the American people have a right to understand what took place here before they go to the polls. It's very disheartening that now so, what so I'm Maria, hearing Maria. is that there will be no John Durham interim report, no indictments before the election. So, 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 so let me disagree a little bit with Chairman Graham, where he said he's very pleased with the production out of uh, the FBI. I am not. Let me just give you one example. Here's a document we got from the General Services Administration. You can see that it's an email, and all everything's presented except for the very bottom. They redacted the mobile phone number of the person writing the email. Here's the exact same email we got from the FBI. You see something different here? Everything is redacted. And that, you know, we, we're supposed to get thousands of pages from our... I had to finally subpoena the FBI. They are on their second extension. Everything is due by, I think, the 30th of September, and that's the kind of information we get. It's not information. We have to fight over redacting uh, the same documents that we get uh, from other agencies. So I am not happy at all with the document production we've gotten out of Director Ray and the FBI, not even close. You know what? I'm really glad you put up those documents because I, this is something that I have heard from day one for three plus years. When when Ratcliffe was in Congress, Nunes in Congress, yourself in the Senate, you've been demanding documents to ensure that you understood what took place and they will not get you the documents. They sit on documents and make it incredibly hard for you to prove the point that you know is to be is true, and that is that it was a sham investigation into President Trump, and there's a ton of wrongdoing here. Do you think you're no, going to get the documents? I mean, is this Christopher Ray? Why is Christopher Ray still in charge of the FBI when he's the, he, he is overseeing these uh, agents sitting on things? His job should be to restore the credibility and integrity of the FBI, and the only way you do that is through exposure. But the other point I have to make, Maria, when we finally do get these classified sections redacted or unredacted when, when, when they become declassified, you look at what information you have and you have to ask yourself the question, what national security interest was at stake here? Why was this ever redacted? The, the answer is almost always because it embarrassed the agency or it embarrassed a powerful person. That is not the reason to, cla to classify information. It's certainly not the reason to keep the truth from the American public. And that's all I've been trying to do is I've been trying to reveal the truth. Another important point to make, you know, yes. I've been accused of yes, peddling Russian disinformation. There is no Russian disinformation in our 87-page report. The press are report on it, and I'm calling on the press. You were duped. You were leaked false information. You should not protect those sources that leaked you false inf information. It should be your journalistic duty to, to yeah. basically tell the American people who provided you false information that resulted in this two- or three-year national yep. nightmare because of the false narratives that you carried That's the right. Democrats' water on. Do your job, media. Ron Johnson, it's good to see you this morning, sir. Thank you. Senator Every Ron day. Johnson joining.